the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 13th. Christina is about to die off in the eastern Pacific and Carina has been designated by Pegasa as a tropical depression, although still would have the appearance of a tropical disturbance according to our estimates right now. July 13th, it's day 195, day 43 of Atlantic hurricane season and we've marked another 10% area in the main development region. It doesn't look like that's going to form, but you never know. In the eastern Pacific, a 40% chance to the east of Christina, which the National Hurricane Center has at 60 to 70% in the next two to five days. Uh, so still a discrepancy there. We're not seeing it just quite as much as they are just at the moment. And in the western Pacific, Carina there is the 70% chance, just to avoid any confusion, and a 20% chance coming through the Philippines late on in the week as well. No systems active in the Indian Ocean at this time though, it's all quiet here as it is as well in the Southern Hemisphere today. So let's take a look at the satellite imagery around the world now, the North Atlantic. There is a little disturbance north of Puerto Rico which looks interesting but won't be doing much. A 10% area for a system that is going to be moving off the coast of Africa shortly. So there's nothing there right now. As a matter of fact you can see a lot of dry air, Saharan dust over that region along with some what appear to be high clouds and some small areas of lower clouds. And in the uh, Gulf of Mexico things looking fairly quiet here as well with the usual thunderstorms popping up. The East Pacific, Christina is pretty much exhausted and that 40% area is just about to enter that uh, oval so that is certainly what we're looking at and it is looking pretty good on satellite imagery so that's probably the main reason why the chances are much higher. Our National Hurricane Center at least 60% as of the time of broadcast for the next two days. In the Western Pacific again looking at those two areas the Carina disturbance which has been named by Pegasa no warnings in effect there just yet uh, at least not to our knowledge uh, but they could be in place a little bit later it should be a good rainmaker for the Philippines which is struggling a little bit at the moment with dry conditions but the next disturbance could follow as well and become a significant tropical cyclone the South Pacific looking fairly quiet as ever you see a rather broad frontal system moving through the east coast of Australia today and in the Indian Ocean things looking rather quiet by its standards as well. Uh, still that monsoonal pattern dominant with a big blow up along the India-Nepal border and uh, lots of rains in Thailand and Myanmar today. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific look fairly good still, around 30 degrees in one or two small little pockets off the coast of Mexico. Out to sea, uh, cooler a little bit, um, and certainly between Hawaii at that latitude, the temperatures are quite low. The Atlantic is continuing to warm up. Now you can see some 30 degree waters off Texas for the first time. So that's continuing and also the western coast of Haiti. All indications still calling for a very active Atlantic hurricane season. The Indian Ocean still fairly warm there as well, 30 degrees generally um, in one or two spots there in the Bay of Bengal. And over in the western Pacific we have an increasing area of warm waters extending further now and it would appear that the western Pacific will get going pretty soon. Models indicating that there could be one or maybe two other tropical cyclones in the next uh, 10 days including the one we have marked 20%. Sea surface temperature anomalies, very warm in the Western Pacific, particularly off the southwestern coast of Taiwan, interestingly. La Nina still in effect and really affecting the Eastern Pacific, which looks like it's really gonna have a bummer of a season. The Atlantic, warmer than average generally with one or two little cool areas. On this day in 1976, Typhoon Therese was peaking as a strong Category 5 storm. 160 miles per hour estimated wind speed with an estimated pressure of 898 millibars. There's a picture of the storm before its peak intensity. That picture I think was July 12th. Still looked pretty good on that day as it was intensifying towards Category 5 status, which it did achieve on the 13th. It would then continue on towards the northwest and would be a threat to Guam as well at this point.
So with Christina the only main system out there right now, the next name in the Eastern Pacific incidentally is Douglas. In the Atlantic we're looking out for Gonzalo. Will it be a seventh successive tropical storm that fails to get to hurricane status? In the Central Pacific it will be Hone next on list one. In the Western Pacific, Sinlaku. Could it be 99W, that system near the Philippines right now? We'll see. Followed by Hagerpit. In the North Indian Ocean, Gatti is the next name on list one. In the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian region's next name will be Imogen, followed by Joshua. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Alicia and Bongoyo kicking off the new season. In the South Pacific, the next name is Yolanda. That's all for now. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an ultimate fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.